Hi, welcome back to part two in the Cyclops series. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss the synthesis modes and the filters. In the last tutorial, I mentioned the analog sync mode. Saw regiment mode involves several sawtooth waves. As you increase the position of this knob, you detune them slightly. Increasing this control gives a little bit of a higher harmonic quality to it. You can get some interesting transformation when you modulate these controls. Digitize is kind of like a bit crusher. Here we have a three oscillator FM synthesis mode. In this mode, you've got one modulator and two carriers with two algorithms, serial and parallel. As you may know with FM synthesis, changing the tuning of the oscillators produces different harmonic results. With whole number ratios, you'll get nice clean note-like qualities, and you'll see the heart appear. A non-harmonic ratio can produce some nice dissonant tonalities. Here you have the amount of modulation for carrier 1 and carrier 2, and an overall linear modulation control. Transformer mode is a bit like a granular synthesis capability. Here you have a sample menu with several samples to choose from. Transformer mode allows you to loop tiny little bits of a sample. This control allows you to choose your location within the sample. Here you have a grain size and a form and shift control. You can double click here to load your own samples. In Spectromat mode, you have an additive synthesis engine. You can turn on the number of oscillators by clicking in here. You can choose different amplitude balances of these oscillators. And you can choose the wave shape that each oscillator generates. You'll probably find that with additive synthesis, the sine waves work best. You can shift the overall frequencies of these oscillators. The spectrum control allows you to change the tuning of the individual oscillators. In the far left position, the oscillators are tuned to an ascending harmonic series. You can widen that frequency distance between the oscillators by moving the knob up. This phase stressor is a bit like an FM synthesis engine where the oscillator modulates itself. The phase stressor oscillator produces some pretty interesting distortion tones. That's basically it for the synthesis section. As I mentioned in the first tutorial, the signal paths allow you to pass a signal through two filters. The filter type is selected down here, and each filter type has your typical cutoff resonance and a dry wet balance control. An interesting feature about these filters is that each one can run in vowel mode. You can select your vowel tone and morph between the two of them with the cutoff point control. <laughs> The vowel tone chosen can be assigned to a MIDI controller. Right click and learn, then you can control it from your mod wheel for instance. Interesting modulation capability there. So that's it for the filter section. Here are the last basic functions that I need to discuss. Here you have a glide or portamento control. In the envelope generator here, at vertical you have zero release time. Moving it to the left of vertical means you have zero sustain value and instant release time after the attack is completed. Taking it to the right of vertical activates a full sustain mode where the release happens after your finger leaves the key. This envelope generator controls the overall volume of the instrument. There's another envelope generator here, but it's considered a modulator and is assignable to any of the parameters that the other modulators are assignable to. In the following tutorials, I'm going to be talking about the modulators, how to route them to targets, the basic operations of those modulators, assigning MIDI controls to them, and that sort of thing. A great feature about Cyclop is that you can assign one MIDI controller to any number of targets. Thanks for watching. Don Garbutt, signing off.